please remember that safety always comes first. Practicing these techniques can cause physical injury. Always consult your physician before starting an exercise or physical training program. We encourage you to train and practice the techniques retailed in these DVDs, but please do so in a safe and sensible manner. Never train with real weapons. There are safe and inner training aids available. Respect your training partner and wear protective equipment as appropriate to your training activities. Also consider supplementing your training by working with a good instructor. You're out with friends. You're minding your own business. You're having a good time. Then out of nowhere, a gun is pushed into your face. Or your friend, for no apparent reason, gets into a fight. And maybe a broken bottle or a knife is used against them. Or even worse, your wife, daughter or son is attacked violently. Your heart beats faster. Your vision narrows. And you freeze. Now let me ask you a question. And I want you to be honest. If it came down to the wire, do you know what it takes to survive the shock, fear and stress of a violent attack? My name is Duncan Paddle. Um, I have over 15 years experience training and teaching uh, Krav Maga. I originally started under Darren Levine of Krav Maga Worldwide. Um, I was certified as an assistant in Los Angeles, California. After training with Darren Levine, I moved back to Australia where I trained under Al Yenilov of the International Krav Maga Federation. The Ultimate Krav Maga DVDs were developed for everybody. Uh, it doesn't matter if you've had no self-defense experience whatsoever, uh, whether you train in another self-defense system or you're a current student of Krav Maga, beginner, intermediate, advanced, or you're a Krav Maga instructor, you will benefit from these DVDs. It's a fact that most attacks happen when we least expect them. Uh, you know, it's also a fact that there is a real good chance that uh, you know, in your lifetime you will find yourself in a situation where you either have to avoid, defuse, or physically deal with a violent confrontation. You're gonna deal with uh, uh, common objects. You're gonna deal with self-defense headlock, chokes. You're gonna deal with a gun in the face. You're gonna deal with a gun in the back, knife to the throat. You're gonna deal with someone attacking you on the ground. You're gonna deal with uh, someone using, teaching you how to use common objects to, to, to aid you in self-defense. You're gonna learn how to punch and kick properly. You're gonna learn everything. This is a complete DVD. The Krav Maga self-defense system places great importance on training with common, ordinary, everyday objects as defensive tools. And we've chosen to introduce this subject first because the reality is using a chair, sports bag or other readily available object within reach makes more sense than risking damage or injury, even if you are highly trained. It doesn't make sense to go against uh, a deadly knife attack using your bare arm if, say, a chair is available. Obviously a situation may arise where your only option will be to defeat the attack using an unarmed technique such as a block with your arm. A subject we will go into in more detail on the following DVDs. For now though, remember, we live in an environment of objects. Now, unlike the dojo, training area or ring, we move through a maze of objects every day. Look around you now as you watch this DVD. What do you see? What objects could you use if you're attacked right now? What do you have on your person that you could use as an improvised defensive weapon? 
Where is the nearest exit or escape route? The bottom line is this. The majority of people tend to be less focused on what is happening around them. And usually, they are more preoccupied with thoughts, problems, and general worries of daily life. How many times have you accidentally bumped into someone because you didn't see them? Or passed by someone, a really good friend, and they said hi to you before you said hi to them? Now we're going to show you in the following DVD how with a little time and effort you can become more aware of people and objects in your vicinity, how to identify possible problems, how to use common everyday objects to defeat an attacker. And we want you to start right now to take a more detailed look at your environment, where you work, where you relax. You see, if you aren't showing how to develop these skills, you don't train, then the fear and shock of an attack will overwhelm you and you will shut down in a time of need. Before we talk about actual objects we can use as defensive weapons, we must train ourselves to increase our level of what the military and law enforcement sometimes call situational awareness. This simply means look and see in an active, engaged way. Now, obviously, different situations require different levels of awareness. Entering a poorly lit car park at night or a hallway requires a different level of awareness than, say, sitting at home in an easy chair reading. Awareness is not about being fearful or paranoid, it's about being in your environment, not only physically, but also mentally. We all look, but do we really see what is happening around us? Now, here are a few things you can practice every day to increase your ability to observe, become more aware, and avoid possible threats. It is important that you make this training habitual and a part of your daily routine. Don't walk or act like a victim. Walk confidently, head up, looking the world in the eye in a non-threatening or confrontational way. Remember, predators prey on those they see as the weakest members of society. Always trust your instincts. If a person or situation does not look or feel right, usually you will be correct. Immediately move away from that person or situation. Don't round corners blindly. Take a few paces or steps out from the wall or building before you turn the corner. You'll be in a better position to see a possible threat. This will also allow you more time to react. Train yourself to be more aware of people around you. For example, start with a simple observation drill. Next time you're at the mall, identify to yourself how many people are wearing baseball caps or how many people have long hair as opposed to short hair. Sounds simple. But by doing this, you'll be amazed at how quickly you will increase your general level of awareness. Learn to deal effectively with distractions. For example, the next time someone comes up to you in the street and asks for the time or directions, assist them if you can. However, learn to divide your attention. Keep the appropriate distance and also be very aware of their actions and the actions of anyone else in the immediate vicinity. Remember, generally most people do not act in a threatening manner. They try to behave in a socially acceptable way. For example, someone staring intently at us or walking very close to us for no apparent reason may make us feel very uncomfortable or in some cases threatened. Now, as I said before, learn to trust and listen to your instincts. Be alert to what is happening around you. Practice daily what I have said until it becomes second nature and you will have taken those first steps to be in control of your personal safety.
Tor! Let's now talk about the importance of using stationary shielding and barrier type objects such as walls, posts, columns, trees, fences, etc. These can all be used to create barriers between you and a threat. Now, by their nature, in most cases, we have to maneuver behind these objects. Most times, provided the attacker is not using a weapon that fires a projectile, distance and some type of barrier will defeat the attack. Now, here are some important considerations to help with your training. Get used to bookmarking shielding objects as you move around in your daily life. Well-trained soldiers do this instinctively as they move around a battlefield, continually scanning for cover. Now we can do the same thing, but at a more relaxed and appropriate level. Safely play out realistic scenarios with a partner, such as using a tree or post or other fixed objects. Even a kitchen table, one partner tries to tag the other on the shoulder, whilst the other avoids the attack by moving around. Always keep these barriers between you and the attacker. Increase the level of your training by starting with a verbal threat and then work with more advanced attacks such as knives. Incorporate pressure into the training by introducing a second attacker, low light or some form of distraction. Training is everything. We must train our minds and bodies to identify the threat and respond instinctively. If you do not make this training a part of your everyday life, you will not respond effectively. As you can see, I've placed some everyday items around me. Now, we mostly take these items for granted. Some of them we use, and most of them we are surrounded by daily. Now, how many of you carry backpacks or bags to work or the gym? How many of you sit at a table with chairs that move? Now, these are the most readily available objects in our society, and most of us would never think twice to use them to shield an attack. As I said before in my main introduction, find something in your environment right now. Pick it up and take a second to think, how could you use it? If you have to pause this DVD, do so. And would the object you just found shield a knife attack or attack with a clubbing weapon? Could you use this as a striking weapon? Now, obviously, we will cover using these objects in more detail following this introduction, but for now, 
I want you to realize how easy it is to train on your own every day to scan and be aware of what you could use in your environment to help save your life. You have to remember, it may be illegal to arm yourself with any item with the intention of using it offensively or in an intimidating way. It also is very important that you understand the laws governing self-defense in your local area. We've established that we have common objects in our environment and on our person that we can use in defense and attack. Now I'm going to demonstrate to you now how to use a backpack. Now this is an early defense against a knife attack. What are the things to remember with this defense? This was an early attack. I saw the attack happening. Two, I may have to transition from using my common object to using some sort of a block and using a counterattack. And the most important is to, I must use reach. Use my reach when I am actually making my defense. Do not let the attack come to you when you use your common object. Use reach to push the knife away. So what you've just seen now is using shielding objects effectively against a knife attack. In the subject of common everyday objects, it's not only important to learn to identify everyday objects in our environment, but how to use them instinctively. And the way that we do this is through drills, putting you under pressure. The following drill will demonstrate this. And time. In any situation, you would obviously use a common object, maybe you use it twice, three times. Maybe you run. The purpose of this drill is to put you under pressure and also to learn to identify where other common everyday objects are in your environment. Maybe one doesn't work, maybe they take one away from you. Also remember that in this drill, although we didn't look at it now, you must also take into account that someone may grab your common object. Therefore, you have to transition into using, from using your common object into kicking, punching, or possibly defending other attacks. How we move in self-defense is very important. Let's look at some basic ideas. Now, what is our natural reaction to something or someone moving quickly towards us? We quite sensibly move out of the way. Now, to put it in self-defense terms, we move off the line of attack. Now, in my years of teaching Krav Maga, I have trained a lot of students who at first you know, find movement boring and not very dynamic. You know, most of them want to cut straight to the kicking, the punching, you know, and the more advanced self-defense techniques. The reality is they can't go forward without movement. Now that's not meant to be a pun, it's this simple. It doesn't matter what level you're training at. If you are training in basic techniques such as kicking and punching or more advanced techniques such as gun, knife, stick, fighting or ground fighting, even defending holds such as headlocks and chokes, you must understand that everything comes back to basic movement. <laughs> In 
Krav Maga, we must learn to defend and attack from any position, simply because we can be attacked anywhere, anytime. So if I'm in a more relaxed position, a passive position with my hands crossed, if I feel that someone is threatening, I can easily transition into what we call a semi-passive position. My elbows are in, my hands are up. From this position, if I have to, I can easily go into more of a ready position or a fighting stance, either with the left leg forward or the right leg forward. Remember, my back heel is raised. My feet are shot width apart. Hands are up, elbows are in. It doesn't matter where we are. I could be seated at a bus stop, in a car, in a movie theatre. We must learn to defend from this position and attack from this position. We don't always have time to get into a fighting stance. If my hands are on my hips, I'm having a conversation with a friend and I'm attacked, I must respond from this position. Whatever I'm doing, we need to train realistically. How to defend and how to attack from whatever position we are in. Think about your daily lives. Think about what you do. Start role playing. If my hands are in my pockets. Obviously, I have to defend from this position. I don't have time to go into a ready position or a stance. Okay, guys, let's now go into a semi-passive position. We're going to transition into a fighting stance. Go. Good. Back heel is raised. Hands jaw level. Elbows are in. Okay, on my call, we're going to go forward, back, left, and right. Ready? Forward, go. Forward, go. Back, go. Pushing off on the forward leg. Remember, if we go forward, it's a back leg. If it's back, it's a forward leg. Go. Going forward. Go. Let's go right. Go. Left. Go. Good. Elbows in a little bit, Jen. Good. Forward. Go. Go. And back. Go. Go. Okay, starting from a passive position, or semi-passive position, Jen and Travis transition into a fighting stance. Their legs are shorter width apart. A little bit more than shorter with the part. Their back heel is raised. Their elbows are in to protect their ribs. Hands are up to protect their face. As they go forward, they push off on the back leg. They go forward six inches, they close six inches. If they go back, they push off on the forward leg. Remembering that each time they land in their fighting stance, their legs are about shoulder width apart to maintain a strong balance. Pushing back, using the forward leg, pushing forward, using the back leg. If they go left, they will push off on the back leg. If they go right, they'll push off on the front leg. Remembering that each time they come back, that their feet are shorter with the part, maybe a little bit more than shorter with the part, to maintain a strong balance. Let's up the pressure a little bit. Okay, let's look at a little more of an advanced movement drill for two reasons. A, to move off the line of the attack, but more importantly, to start scanning and being aware of our, not only our environment, but other attackers. It works like this, Travis, please. I move to the outside of a circle from here and I make a redirection. Off the line of the attack, I never go through, I stay on the outside. Can we switch, Travis? And we switch to Jen. Good. And good.
let's now look at shadow boxing. Now, shadow boxing is an excellent drill. Now, this is something you can do in the mirror at home, you can do with a partner or by yourself anywhere in any environment. Now, the reason we shadow box is to increase your movement ability, your coordination, your strength, and your balance. Also, we must chain and link our attacks together. As you can see, the students are using their punches and their kicks. There is no dead spaces. As they punch, they start to kick. As they kick, they start to punch. Let's now look at a drill to improve and enhance our movement. As you can see, they're shadowing each other. As Stephanie moves forward, he moves back. And vice versa. Remembering basic movement, pushing off on the feet. To go forward, you push off, push off on the back foot. To go back, you push off on the forward foot. To go left, you push off on the right foot. And to go right, you push off on the left foot. From a ready position, a stance. And pick it up a little bit, a little bit more intense. Let's now look at a similar shadowing drill. Stephanie will have her fist close to Joey's chest. She leads the movement from this position. If she goes back, Joey moves forward. If she goes forward, Joey moves back. If she goes to the side, he moves. He follows the fist. Remembering the basic principles of movement, pushing off on the balls of the feet. So let's recap. I've covered being more aware of your surroundings to prevent possible attacks, using objects in your environment within the law to aid us in self-defense, and we've introduced the important subject of movement. Now we're not just gonna show you how to make an effective strike using your feet, hands, nope. elbows, or knees. You'll also be shown proper punching and kicking ranges and how to chain or link your strikes so that they flow smoothly and efficiently. And we will also address the important issue of gaps or dead space in our strikes. Meaning that we need to ensure that as one punch is landing and recalling, another strike is on the way to the target. Krav is not trained for competition or ring fighting. We are training to defeat one or more attackers who want to injure, rape, or in the worst case, kill us. 
So your training must go beyond just striking a bag or focus mitt in a dojo or studio. We need to teach you drills and techniques that can best prepare you for the street, simply because attacks happen in the street and not in the comfort of a dedicated training studio. However, for practical reasons, we will show you some of these techniques in a studio setting. We're now going to look at straight punch using the palm or the heel of the hand. On the street we don't have gloves or wraps, so we need effective strikes that are simple and safe. From this position here, from this position, from this position, Let's have a look at the technique. Where am I striking? I'm striking with the palm or the heel of the hand in this area. My fingers are slightly back and I strike forward here. My elbows are in. My shoulder goes forward from this position and I pivot on the balls of my feet. From this position. Remember also, neck. Chin slightly turtled. Ish, from here. Ish. Palm strike is very similar to a straight punch, except the fingers are flexed back, tensing the bottom of the palm adjacent to the thumb, giving more surface area to strike with, and not endangering the more vulnerable areas like the knuckles. Remember, we don't have gloves or wraps on the street. I'm striking with the palm, the heel of the hand. My fingers are flexed back. My elbow stays down as long as possible, shoulders forward, weight forward into the punch, punching through the target using proper distance. Don't train to pull your punches, mark the target and recoil strongly. I can also do this from a fighting stance, from the forward hand. And the back hand, pivoting on the base foot. Weight, shoulders going forward. When I throw combinations, left right combinations, I must remember that as one strike is being sent and is returning, they cross in the middle. My other strike has been sent, recoiling, out and back, explosively. Bish, 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 bish. 
Whoosh! Let's break the technique down. How do I make a fist? I roll my first knuckles to the second. I wrap my thumb around the first two knuckles. My wrist is not bent, it is straight from this position. I am making a 45 degree fist on impact. I start from a passive position, my elbows are in. Imagine that you're just reaching into a cupboard, pulling out a glass. Shoulders are going forward to get my power. I use my hips, I pivot on the balls of my feet. Weight is going forward. When I make my punch, I must recoil. To make a fist, roll the first and second knuckles, rubbing the thumb around the first finger, making a solid fist with your wrist, straight and in line with your arm. Now look down your arm at the wrist and make sure it's not bent, it should be straight. The fist is about 45 degrees on impact. I'm striking with the first two knuckles. I punch out, I recoil back. My hands stay up. To generate power, I'm pivoting on the base foot, using my hips, shoulders, weight going forward. Elbows are in to protect my ribs. 45 degrees on impact, I recoil. Striking with the first two knuckles, pivoting on the base leg, using the hips to generate power, shoulders going forward. Other hand stays up, which is very important. I can strike from a passive stance, semi-passive stance, fighting stance, with the forward hand or the back hand. We're now going to look at regular front kick from this position. Now this is a kick that can be delivered from a passive stance, left or right leg, from a fighting stance, from the forward leg or the back leg. If I am close, I can use my shin. If I am at medium range, I can use the top of my foot or the ball of the foot. And if I'm further away, I have to advance in using the top or the ball of the foot. For now, we're going to work for a medium range. My elbows are in, my hands are up. I'm kicking with the top of the foot. I point my knee to the target, I lean back, and at the end, there's a slight snapping motion. Left leg. Fighting stance. Back leg. Remember this kick, like anything we do in Krav Maga, any combative can be thrown from a, either a passive stance, semi-passive stance, a fighting stance, or a more relaxed position. My elbows are in, my hands are up. I point my knee towards the target, I lean back slightly, and I'm making a kick upward. For now, imagine you are striking with the top of your foot, same area where you tie your shoelaces, flexing my toes forward, leaning back slightly to open up my hips, which makes my kick longer. The power is coming from my hips. I am driving up with my hips, thrusting forward and up. We just looked at front regular kick in the studio. Now we're going to look at roundhouse kick in an, in an outdoor setting. Now, the reality is, remember, when you're training on uh, uneven ground, there may be rocks, there may be dirt, you may slip, so you must be careful when you do this. But again, this adds realism to our training, simply because we're not attacked in dojos or training centers. From this position, roundhouse kick with the back leg. This is very similar to a front kick. My front kick is on a vertical plane. My roundhouse kick can be diagonal or it can be on a horizontal plane. 
The area that I'm striking with is either the shin, the ball of the foot, or the top of the foot, the same area where you tie your shoelaces. It can be delivered from the back leg. It can be delivered from the forward leg. For demonstration purposes now, we're going to look at uh, attacking with the back leg. From this position, I'm making now more of a diagonal roundhouse kick. My hands are up, my elbows are in. I get power from my hips. I am sending my foot from the ground, pushing off the ball of the foot, and I am driving through, it, through the target. From this position here, I push off on my back leg, and at the end of my kick, there is a, s a small snapping motion, but I am driving through the target. If I land forward in my kick, this is important. If I land forward, I must be continuing with other counterattacks. Again, diagonal kick. Hands are up, elbows are in. I push off through the ball of the foot. I go through the target. Slight rotation of the hips, pivoting on the base foot. Continue with attacks. Diagonal roundhouse kick. Now let's look at more of a horizontal roundhouse kick. With this particular kick, it is possible to kick with the shin. There is more rotation now in my hips. I am pivoting more on the base foot. From this position here, Nice. What's Jen doing? Firstly, we make a fist. How do we make a fist? We roll the first knuckles to the second knuckles. We wrap the thumb around the first two knuckles. Our wrist is straight. We do not want to bend our wrist when we strike. She's making a hammering motion. Why do we call it a hammer fist? Because it has the same characteristics as a hammer. The head, the handle. And she's making a forward motion with her strike. Watch again from this position, switching. Again, Jen. Time, time. Her attack is forward. She's making a slight pivot with her foot. Her weight, power, generated by going forward. Let's now look at hammer fist downward from this position, Jen. and time. When would this be an effective strike? If maybe from this position here, I was attacking Jim with maybe a better hug, she can strike to the neck, spine. Her weight is now going down. She's bending slightly with the legs, weight going down, hammering down. Remembering other hand stays up when we strike. From this position, what if the threat was to the side of Jen? Okay. Hands up. 
Other side. How is she generating the power? She is pivoting on the opposite foot to the striking hand. And again, she's still hitting with the meaty part of the hand. Although we teach punching in Krav Maga, it's a lot safer to use the meat part of the hand and with palm strikes also the heel of the hand. What if the threat is behind Jen? Will the same strike work? Jen, move forward a little bit, please. Hands are up. She looks first. She pivots and she strikes. Go. 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 Time. Other side. And this way, please, Jen. Hands are up. She looks and strikes. Go. Go. Nice. Time. Again, Jen is seeing the threat. It's no good just throwing their hand back. We have to see, identify what is behind us. She looks and then she strikes. She's pivoting this way. Now what happens if the threat is a little bit lower? Will the same strike work? Let's have a look. She's going to strike maybe the groined area. From this position, hands are up. Go. 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 Time. What is she doing with this strike? She's bending forward. Striking. Bending forward. Striking. This way. Still hitting with the meaty part of the hand. Now if the threat was a little bit higher. Jenny's going to start with her hands up. She's going to bend forward, similar to a pendulum. She, as she bends forward, the attack is thrown. From this position, go. And time. So now we have one attack, a hammer fist attack, that works to the side, in front. If the attack is low, from this position. If the attack is behind me, I can strike. I can strike to the groin and I can strike to the face. To go forward with my strike, I'm pivoting on the same leg as the striking hand. Again, striking with the meaty part just below the pinky. striking to the side. I am pivoting on the opposite foot to the striking hand. I am going through the target. Again, still striking with the meaty part just below the pinky. As I strike, I recoil, my hands come back. Jaw level, elbows are in. To generate power, I am using my hips. Just like a hook punch, I pivot on my, the ball of my foot and I generate the power from my hips. Striking behind. I look first, identify the problem, the threat, and I strike with the same area on the hand, the meaty part just below the pinky. I can deliver powerful strikes from any angle. I can deliver the strikes from a passive stance, semi-passive stance, or fighting stance. I can also strike up and back. Again, this is very similar to our elbows. I bend forward at the waist, looking around my shoulder or under my arm, identifying the problem first and striking. Bending at the waist, striking up. Striking down. I'm dropping my weight forward. 
hammering downward. Again, still striking with the same area, meaty part just below the pinky. Slight bend in my knee. My weight is going down and forward. I am hammering down, recoiling my punch. Okay, from this position, let's look at the attack. My punch is going around to the target from here. In this particular drill, I want to make sure my bicep is touching Travis's forearm. I come around to the target. From a passive position, let's look at the punch. My hands are up. From here, when I make the punch, my fist makes a small circle out so I can come around, around, around. I am pivoting on the balls of my feet. I am going through the target from here. Hitting with the first two knuckles. A hook punch is a close quarter strike. Rather than making a straight punch now, I'm bending my elbow and I'm punching around the opponent's defense to the side of the head or the body. Striking with the first two knuckles, my fist is vertical. After I make the punch, I recoil. I'm generating the power with my hips. I'm pivoting on the base foot, on the ball of the feet, and I'm punching through the target. As I recoil, my other hand comes up. Look at my punch. I am coming up and through the center line. I am hitting with the first two knuckles. I do not drop my hand to make this strike because my face is exposed. From here, I drop my shoulder and my hip and I push up through my leg. Punching a little bit away from my face. An uppercut punch is a close quarter punch that is coming up and under the attacker's defense. I'm striking with the first two knuckles and my hand is horizontal, using the legs to generate power. I'm bending at the knees and at the waist. My elbow is in close to my body. I do not drop my hand. I do not drop my hand. This exposes my face. I keep it close to my shoulder. As I punch, I drive up with my legs. Do not drop your hand, this is very important. Shoulder drops, hand goes with the shoulder. I'm using the legs driving up. Prior to impact, I'm turning the fist so the palm is facing me. And I recoil.
Ish. 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 We just demonstrated three kicks from the stomping family using the flat part of the foot, either the ball of the foot or the heel. From push kick, side kick, and back kick. We're now going to look at a defensive kick forward. We use this kick to either stop somebody that's attacking us, to push someone back, or in an attack. From this position here, my hands are up, my elbows are in. I am using the ball of the foot, the heel of the foot. My knee comes up high from this position, and I'm pulling my toes back to either use the ball or the heel. As I bring my knee up, I'm using my hips thrusting forward to generate the power from this position. Shh. 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 Side kick. My hands are up. This can also be used to stop somebody. It can be used to push someone back if we're using an advance. And it can be used to attack somebody with. From this position here, I'm bringing my knee up high again. Either hitting with the flat part of the foot or the heel. As I kick, as I bring my leg up, I am shooting it towards the target. From this position. From behind, if the threat is behind me, I cannot look over my shoulder because this keeps my back straight. I want to be able to bend forward so I can kick. So I look around my shoulder or under my arm, hitting with the heel or the flat part from this position here. Front push kick forward. This kick is designed to stop or push the attacker back. I'm striking with the ball or the heel of the foot to the top of the groin, knee, sternum or head. Notice how I'm using my hips by thrusting forward to generate power. As I kick, I'm punching the foot, the leg and my hips straight out. As you kick, you curl your toes back. You're striking with the ball of the foot. You recoil your kick and land forward, either defending or delivering multiple counterattacks, or you can recover back to a fighting stance. How do I deliver my side kick? I am sideways to the attack. My hands are up, my elbows are in. I'm bringing my knee up and I'm pivoting on my base foot to shoot my hips towards the target. The power is generated from my hips. I'm striking with the flat part or the heel of the foot. I recoil my kick, either retreating into a fighting stance or continuing with counterattacks. Knee comes up, pivoting on the base foot, shooting my hips towards the target. Recoiling, bringing my leg down, continuing with counterattacks, defending other attacks or retreating into some sort of a ready position.
Okay, my starting position. I'm in a passive stance. The target or the threat is behind you. First, take a second to look. Identify what is behind you. Identify the threat before you kick. I chamber my right, my right knee, I bring my knee up. I then send my foot backwards, toes down. I'm striking with the flat part or the heel of the foot. Make contact with your heel going through the target. At the same time, bend your body forward, similar to a pendulum. Shift your hips, especially the kicking side, backward into the kick. As you kick, look around your arm, not over your shoulder, around your arm or under your arm. If you continue looking over your shoulder, you won't be able to bend properly and deliver an effective kick. Now it's important to remember that because our back is to the target, we must deliver the kick as soon as possible and then adjust to another fighting stance or another position so we can best defend or deliver multiple counterattacks. Thank <laughs> you. 
We're now going to look at elbows, which are a close quarter combative. Now we deliver elbows on two planes, a horizontal plane and a vertical plane. The areas I'm striking are just in front of the elbow and behind the elbow. From this position, let's look at elbow going forward. I generate power by pivoting on the balls of my feet and I go through the center line. My hand is like a knife hand. It is open, but strong. This way. If the attack is to the side of me, I am using the area behind my elbow and I'm going through the target. Again, remembering my hand is like a knife hand. If the attacker is behind me, I look, I strike back using the area behind my elbow. And I can strike also up and back. If the attacker is in front of me, I'm now using an upward or a vertical elbow, which is very similar to uppercut. Striking the air in front of the elbow. I am using my legs to drive up to generate power from this position. Now imagine that you were in some sort of a low bear hug or a hold. We can use an elbow that is going down to the back of the neck, which is very similar to hammer fist in this position. Dropping my weight, I'm going down. Slightly bending the knee, downward. Horizontal elbow, strike forward. I bring my hand to my shoulder and I make a knife hand with my fingers extended. I'm swinging my elbow horizontally in front of my face, aiming for the attacker's face or throat area. I am striking with the point, the area below my elbow, the point of my elbow. I'm pivoting on the ball of my foot and I'm using my hips to generate power, very similar to a hook punch. My hand, my other hand stays up. Each time I deliver my attack, I recoil and come back to ready position. Elbow strike to the side. Bring my hand to my shoulder, making a knife hand, striking out. As I strike with the area behind my elbow, the back of my arm, I strike out and I recoil. The power is generated from me making a slight lean to the side and a punching motion outward with my elbow. It is possible to also take a step. Horizontal elbow backwards. Bring your hand into your shoulder. Opposite hand is up protecting your face. I'm pivoting on the opposite leg to the striking elbow and I strike horizontally backwards. Remember to look over your shoulder. See what's behind you before you strike first. Pivot on the opposite leg and strike. Again, I'm using my hips. I'm getting the power from my hips and also from pivoting on the balls of my feet. Delivering the strike backwards. Vertical elbow strike back and low. Send your elbow straight back to the attacker's ribs or stomach area. Hands are up. I am not looking over my shoulder. I want to look around my shoulder or under my arm. I want to be able to bend at the waist. Striking with the area behind the elbow towards the tricep area as well. I look around my shoulder. I strike.
recoiling and coming back to the same position. Vertical elbow forward and upward. I'm striking up with my elbow. I'm using my legs, pushing through my legs to generate the power, striking up. I'm striking with the area just below the elbow, the point of the elbow, driving up, very similar to an uppercut. Driving up through the legs, through the balls of the feet. As I make my elbow, I recoil. My opposite hand is up. And I come back to my starting position. Vertical elbow downward. I'm bending at the knees and dropping my weight forward. It's possible to take a step. It's very similar to a hammer fist down one as well. Attacking, recoiling. Opposite hand stays up. Striking with the area behind the elbow, back towards the tricep area. I bend the knees, weight goes forward and down as I'm driving down with my elbow to the opponent's neck, head area. Recoiling. Other hand stays up. Very similar to a hammer fist. Again, my hand is like a knife hand, fingers are extended. Vertical elbow strike backwards and up. Bring your hand to your shoulder, making a bend in your arm. You punch your elbow backwards and upward towards the attacker's face or throat. Remembering to recoil. I'm looking around the shoulder and striking upward. Striking with the area behind the elbow towards the tricep. Just like elbows, knees are an extremely effective close quarter strike. So let's break it down. How do we deliver a knee effectively? When I grab Travis, I'm grabbing the back of the arm towards the elbow, the neck area or the shoulders. I am not grabbing clothing. Why? Because clothing rips. So we are grabbing skin. From this position, I am pulling Travis towards me. I am using the point above my knee. I'm pressing my forearm into his throat. Why do I do this? To stop Travis from trying to grab or tackle me from this position. I can push using my forearm. I am delivering the knee with a point above the knee, cap from here, and I'm using my hips and thrusting up. Groin, solar plexus, sternum, head. From this position, watch what I'm doing from here. Pressing in, striking, striking. Thrusting my hips up. This is what gives me the power. Now, watch what my foot is doing from here. If I land with my foot forward, I cannot generate an explosive push off for the second, third, fourth knee. So after I finish the first knee, I must step slightly back, pushing off with the ball of my foot. Ish. 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 We have a vertical knee, we have a horizontal knee. Same points as the vertical knee. Or am I grabbing back of the elbow, tricep area, grabbing the back of the, the neck area or the back shoulder area. I am using my forearm, pushing against his throat to stop him from tackling from this position. I must deliver my knee on this horizontal plane. How do I get the power? I am using a pivoting motion on the ball of my feet. From this position here, here. This is very similar, or it is exactly the same, as a roundhouse kick. From this position, I grab. As I knee, I'm turning. Pivoting. Shh, pivoting.
We have the nose from here. We have the jaw. Ears from here. Throat. Sternum. Solar plexus. Going down to lower, we have groin. Top of the groin. Knees. Shin. Top of the foot from here. Going to the side. Jaw, ears, ribs, knees, shin, top of the foot. From behind, back of the head, spine, vertebrae, kidneys, coccyx, calf, back of the knee. Achilles tendon. As I said in my introduction, we must consolidate our training. We need to bring everything together. Now with this drill, Travis is in a passive position. The reality is we don't walk around the street in a fighting stance. So he's less ready. I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure to Travis and he's going to strike from whatever position I land. From this position here, go. Time. I move around, Travis. Go. Time. Go. What was Travis doing? As he was striking the pad and recoiling, the second strike was delivered, eliminating the dead spaces or gaps. What is Travis doing? He's closing the distance by moving forward and striking. Front kick, go. Side kick, go. Back kick, go. Side kick, go. Front kick, go. 